Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as the Revit Kid. I wanna thank you for joining me today. I have a quick tip tutorial. Um, this tutorial was uh, inspired by Chris Broda, who is a member of the BIM After Dark community. If you're interested in checking out the community and becoming a member, head on over to community.bimafterdark.com. We've got 140 plus members and grown. We've got some awesome discussions, and this is one of them. Uh, we had a, an office hour where we were talking about some residential roof things, and um, one of the things that came up was gutters and how to handle end caps. And so after we racked our brains a little bit, uh, Chris actually came up with a brilliant idea, which I'm gonna share with you today. Before we actually jump into the tutorial though, this specific quick tip was actually sponsored by RevitFamily.biz. Um, if you're looking for specific, especially residential family types, doors, interior windows, exterior windows, and cabinets, this is your place. I've actually tried out the cabinet families myself. They're phenomenal. The way it works is you have four different uh, style and, and types. So for example, if you are um, designing a craftsman style house, um, there's craftsman doors, there's craftsman um, cabinets, and then there's craftsman windows. They're fully parametric. They look great in uh, not just your elevations, your 3D views, but your floor plans and sections as well. Um, Brenton, who is the, the creator of these families, is great and has an awesome user support. And Brenton has been nice enough to offer you a 30% off coupon code. So head on over to revitfamily.biz, use promo code revitkid21, and check out some of the awesome families that Brenton's created, and let me know what you think of them as well. All right, so now let's jump into this tutorial. I promise you, this is a really, really cool one. So I'm gonna head on over to Revit right now. And I'm sure anyone who's ever done gutters has probably run into this issue. So you have this gutter here, okay? So you have this gutter here and you want it to terminate. And I can tell you right now, most of you, if I had to guess, uh, probably used uh, either an in-place mass or an in-place object, or you created a family that works for it. Well, Chris, uh, thank you for, for thinking of this again, Chris, it's awesome, thought of a really, really great solution. So first what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna pull this gutter back a little bit for now. All right, so I'm gonna pull this back. I'm gonna scroll down to where it says families, and then I'm going to roll down to profiles and you can see we have a color gutter profile this is the profile that creates our gutter anyone who's not familiar with Revit profiles and family creation I'm gonna open it just so you can see so what this is and I'm actually gonna quickly turn on our dimensions and our reference plane so you can see so this is a parametric profile that um, gets extruded and creates your gutter that you see so basically this, this shape is being extruded along the length of your roof when you create a gutter. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna take this, I'm gonna say file, save as, family. I'm just gonna save them to my desktop for now. I'm gonna call this one end cap. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna close this profile so it makes the extrusion you want for the end cap. So first you'll notice that this is kind of a strange profile. Instead of having a reference plane here, it's like, it's oddly locked to all this weird stuff going on here. So as far as family creation is concerned, this is actually not the greatest sort of um, methodology. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to click this line, unlock it, and then delete it. So now this line, in theory, should be movable. So it is. Otherwise, you'll see that that won't go. And then I'm going to use TR on my keyboard for trim. I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to click here. Then I'm just going to tab and delete this interior piece. So now we have a fully functional uh, parametric gutter but the difference is right we're just we're closing this gutter so now the extrusion is going to be a solid piece kind of like an end cap so now let me save this I'm going to load it into my project now the key here is if you'll notice if I go over here on the left hand on the bottom I have gutter profile bevel end cap okay so now you can see we have a five five inch so what we need to do is we actually need to make a gutter type that uses that new profile. So I'm gonna click edit type. I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna say uh, five by five end cap. And now right here, I'm just gonna pick my end cap profile, right? So we already had the beveled one. I'm just gonna pick the end cap. I'm gonna leave it the same material, click okay. And now you'll notice I actually had this selected. So this whole thing went solid. So let me just flip this back to five by five. I'm gonna create 
a new gutter. You could you could actually create it as its own. Um, it doesn't really make a huge difference. So um, what I'm what I'm saying there is, if I want it to be part of this gutter system, I can say add remove a segment, but um, the problem is it's going to delete this and it's going to get a little ugly. So what I want to do is select this, say create similar, which is CS on my keyboard. Click the edge of my roof. And you'll notice it made this gutter, which is actually kind of pulling all the way over there. So I'm just going to pull this back. Right now I'm going to make it pretty thick so you can see. So now I have two gutters, right? The two gutter profiles, the two gutters there. If I change this to end cap, guess what? We have ourselves an end cap. We can make this whatever dimension we want. So I could type in, I could move it. Um, we could align this with it. And then because of the same material, guess what? I can just join them. Modify, join, and look at that thing. Now we got ourselves a gutter end cap. And what's cool about this is it's going to act just like a gutter does, right? So when you modify the roof, it's going to modify. When you adjust the pitch or something, it's going to stay with it. If you move the roof, it's going to move with it. So now you have a fully functioning gutter end cap. Pretty freaking cool, huh? <laughs> I know it's a simple, short, easy tutorial, but it's one of those ones where I went, aha. And I want to thank Chris again um, for, for telling us about this and sharing it and then allowing me to make a, uh, a video about it to share with you all. So thank you, Chris. Thank you guys for joining me today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and hit the notification yeah. bell. This is a pre-recorded tutorial, but you can definitely join me live every Thursday night on BIM After Dark Live. So thank you guys so much. Love you all.